Armstrong. Unfortunately, after over a decade of being a cyclist and pushing his body to its limits daily, Lance flew too close to the sun and got caught. In 2012, a new drug test revealed that Lance had been taking multiple brands of steroids. Many other athletes competing in the Tour de France were also discovered to have been using as well, but Lance was the face of the crime and the talk of the world for many weeks, even appearing on multiple talk shows, newscasts, magazines, and even going on Oprah to publicly apologize and beg his fans to forgive him for his mistake. Sadly, it doesn't look like he'll be finding forgiveness anytime soon. Once described by New York Times as the greatest baseball player who ever lived, Barry Bonds had a promising career as a baseball player. Recruiters were figuratively lining up at his door to try and get him to join their team. Nothing seemed to be stopping the unstoppable Barry Bonds until he tarnished his own name by getting himself into the middle of a very large steroid scandal, in which him and many other athletes of many different sports were found to have been taking drugs provided by the same underground drug ring. To make matters worse, Barry went on interviews where he appeared to be non-apologetic about the crimes he had committed, and looked as though he couldn't care less about the trust he had broken between his fans and him, effectively throwing his own career under the bus. At this point, his career is virtually unsavable. The man who was once thought to be Sports Hall of Fame material is now nothing more than a stain on baseball history. The ever so unstable Mike Tyson is a boxing legend of his time, nearly unbeatable. But out of the ring, Tyson was not nearly as great of a man. In 1992, he was convicted of raping a woman and sentenced to six years in jail, later released after three. Once out, Tyson wanted right back in the ring. His big comeback fight was against Evander Holyfield, who had previously taken the heavyweight champion title away from Tyson. Being that this was the second time these two would be fighting and considering the circumstances surrounding it, the entire world was watching this highly publicized event. But unknowingly to Holyfield, Tyson was fighting this match with prison rules. As soon as it looked like Holyfield had Tyson up against the ropes, Tyson snapped out and bit off one of Holyfield's ears. Tyson was disqualified from the match and lost his boxing license, though it was later reinstated. The match achieved notoriety as one of the most bizarre fights in boxing history. Before being a movie star and the governor of a state, Arnold Schwarzenegger became rich and famous for his bodybuilding skills. He became a multi-millionaire just by selling his image and his workout equipment, after which he moved on to become a Hollywood actor and against all odds rise to the top, becoming one of Hollywood's most sought-after actors. When Hollywood began to bore him, Schwarzenegger moved on to politics, where he ran for governor of California. During his campaign, many of his opposing competition dug into his past and found it was full of steroids and other illegal substance abuse. They brought this all to light in an effort to shame him into backing out. But Arnold is not one to back away from a challenge. He won the campaign and became governor of the state of California. Many years later, the news tabloids would be buzzing with the newfound information that Arnold had had an affair with his maid who later birthed their love child. After this came to light, all of Arnold's previous successes seemed to be completely overshadowed by the fact that he had a secret teenage son. His wife moved out of the house, and Arnold was ordered to pay millions of dollars in child support. In auto racing, cheating is a huge part of the sport, as teams will look to try anything and everything to give themselves even the smallest advantage, hoping that their scam will be overlooked during the pre-race inspection or go unnoticed during the actual race. Sometimes the cheating is a little more obvious, as was the case for the Formula One races in 2008 with the Reynold team. The team ordered their driver records and wins were wiped out, and a once promising career was now nothing more than a stain in baseball history. Ten years later, Danny resurfaced for an interview where he talked about his life growing up. He claims that his parents robbed him of a childhood in favor of training him to become a better baseball player. He would be forced to practice long hours daily and dragged to tryouts constantly. To Danny Almonte's parents, he was nothing if he wasn't a baseball player. 
taking a page right from Danny Almonte's parents. During the 2000 Sydney Olympics, the Chinese government falsified the age of a female international gymnast, Dong Fang Xiao. During her competitive career, Dong competed under a passport that stated her date of birth was January 20th, 1983. However, years later, when she certified to work as a technical official at the 2008 Summer Olympics, she registered using a passport that gave her a January 23rd, 1986 birthday. The 1986 birthday would have made her 14 at the 2000 Olympics. The International Federation of Gymnastics requires that the minimum age allowed to enter the Olympics is 16, making her two years too young. After an investigation, the International Federation of Gymnastics made an official ruling that Dong had been underage and would have been ineligible to compete. As a consequence, Dong's scores from both the 1999 Worlds and 2000 Olympics were nullified. The 2000 Chinese Olympic gymnastics team was stripped of its Olympics bronze medal and was stripped of their team's medals from the 1999 World Championships. In addition, after the investigation was over, the International Federation of Gymnastics billed the Chinese Gymnastics Federation for the cost of the inquiry just to kick them when they're down. As crazy as it seems, the Chinese gymnastics team wasn't the only one cheating to give themselves an advantage in the 2000 Olympics. However, this time, instead of dealing with underage competitors, we're dealing with illegal drugs being taken, which is a nice change of pace. Marion Jones was a track and field athlete for the USA team during the 2000 Olympics and was a former professional basketball player for the Tulsa Shock in the WNBA. During the Olympics, she won three gold and two bronze medals. Suspicions arose when onlookers noticed a shift in her personality and an incredible improvement in her athletic ability. She was brought in to be drug tested, but before any results were made, she broke down from the pressure of lying and subsequently pleaded guilty. She claims at first her coach told her it was flax seeds, and by the time she found out the truth, it was too late. Jones was stripped of her five medals and was sent to prison for six months. Tim Donaghy was a referee for the NBA. In 2007, Donaghy was dishonorably discharged after it came to light that he had an extreme gambling addiction problem. Since Donaghy had already had a history of missing calls or making bad ones, rumors spread that he was betting on games he officiated, fixing them to his advantage. These allegations led to a full-on investigation. On August 15, 2007, Donaghy pleaded guilty to two federal charges related to the investigation. A year later, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison and three years of supervised parole. The NBA's reputation is still recovering from the incident. The 2000 Summer Paralympics in Sydney, which had already seen controversy with numerous positive drug tests, would be the venue for one of the most scandalous events in the sport's history, as well as being the inspiration for the movie The Ringer. At the 2000 Paralympic Games held in Sydney, Australia, the Spanish Paralympics basketball coach Fernando Martín Vicente recruited a team of able-bodied men to fake having a mental disability. The Spanish basketball team unsurprisingly blew away their competition, and everyone went home with gold medals hanging around their necks. However, one of the members of the victorious team, Carlos Ribagorda, was too guilt-ridden to keep up the shame. He and an undercover journalist worked together to reveal to a Spanish business magazine that most of Ribagorda's colleagues had not undergone the required medical tests to ensure that they had a disability. Once news broke, the IPC investigated these claims and found that the Spanish Paralympic Committee did not perform the required mental tests, which would have shown that none of their competitors had an IQ under 70, which is the highest